In a seemingly never-ending quest to achieve photorealism using Keyshot, I wanted to create a manufacturing defect called Flash. This jagged bit of material sticking out from the side of the part on the right is an example of what I'm talking about. It's a side effect of the molding process, either compression molding or injection molding, where a bit of the material seeps out from between the molds, and you're left with this jagged seam. Thanks to the fairly new 3D paint node in Keyshot, it's pretty simple to create in the material graph. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now in this tutorial, I'm only going to focus on showing you how to create the flash here, not the entire material in depth. To get this looking as real as I could, this is actually what the material graph ended up looking like. And if this is making your head spin, but you'd still like to learn how to do this someday, then I highly recommend you check out my Keyshot Material Masterclass. It's my latest course, and I promise you by the time you're done working through it, you will be able to create something like this on your own with confidence. So if that sounds good to you, follow the link in the description. Let's get back to the tutorial. Let's go ahead and jump into the material graph. So the first step we're gonna do for creating this flash is setting up our textures that are gonna create the lines that we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, go down to textures and choose mesh. And we actually want two of these. So hold alt, click and drag to duplicate it. And we're also gonna need a displace node to make this push off the surface of the model. We can connect our displace to the geometry socket of the root node. And then let's set up our first mesh. I'll go ahead and hit C to preview that. And we wanna set its mapping type to planar so we can project it down from the top view. And I'm gonna center it on part. And I'm gonna change it from circle shape to line. Right now we have a bunch of lines. We only want one line, so I'm gonna space them out. So I'll take my pattern spacing up to 100 millimeters just to create some space. And I wanna squeeze this line down so it's skinny. I'm gonna take the width all the way down to say 0.2, I believe, something like that. Now we have to think about the color of our texture. The white areas are gonna get pushed out when we use this for displacement and the black will not. So let's actually swap the black and white values here so we get the result we actually want. And with that, we have the first line done. This is the line that's created from the mold parts that come together and meet in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to the displace. Next, we wanna go into our second mesh, double click it. I'm gonna turn off sync. That way, if I make changes to this, it doesn't affect the other one. I'll hit C to preview. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go to planar, center it on part, and we're gonna change it not from circle, uh, we're gonna keep it on circles, but we do want to have a ring instead of a solid circle. So we're gonna go ahead and choose show outline and we get a blue circle around our black circle. And what we wanna do is set these colors to be correct. We want a white ring. So let's set our outline color to white and let's set the other two colors like the background and the color to black. So now we have a white ring. Uh, if we scale this thing up, like our shape diameter, we should be able to get a big circle or a ring in the middle. Notice they're all getting bigger, but they're not spacing out. We need them to space out. So let's actually take the pattern spacing and increase that tremendously, like 100 again. And now we can take our shape diameter up until we see our ring. I'm gonna go try 20. There we go, 20 is good. Now it's too thick, so let's make it skinnier. And we're gonna do that by taking our outline size and making that smaller because that's just affecting this outline that we're using for this ring. And I'm gonna bring this down very small, 0 0.02. And I think I wanna make it a little bigger because I want it to be right on the shoulder of this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring the diameter up a little bit to get that a little wider. We'll, we'll go ahead and do the move texture thing. I'm gonna translate this up so it's actually sitting kind of on the top here. And I'm gonna set my depth all the way down to like two millimeters. That way we see the ring up top, but it doesn't project all the way through the part. Now, when we get out of this preview, we need to combine these and we'll do this by right clicking on this connector, go to utilities, color composite. And right now we wanna combine them, plug mesh two into the background. And when we hit C to preview on color composite and we change our blend mode to screen, it should work, but it doesn't. I'll explain why. The reason we're choosing screen is because it's gonna take the lightest values and overlay them on top of the black values. If we go into our mesh, our procedurals, the alpha mode is set to stencil whole Without getting too nerdy here, let's just change it to opaque, which means it's going to just interpret this as black and white values and not use any sort of alpha. Same thing for the other one, let's change it to opaque. Once we do that, now they properly blend and we're good to go. We need to displace them, so we'll get out of the preview. Let's go into displace. 
uh, in order to get the shape of them on the surface. So let's go ahead and change this displacement height to two millimeter and hit execute. And now we got like kind of like a mohawk <laughs> going on and we may just need to go down smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and try 0.2. There we go. Unfortunately, I found that in order to close this gap, we ended up getting this ruffled sort of look inside our mesh. I'm not sure if this would help, but we could use a little fall off. So if I increase the fall off for the first one a little bit, maybe like 0.4, I'm not sure if that's gonna make a difference, but that, should, that might soften the edge a little bit. So that seems to help here on the side. Now the other one, the fall off isn't gonna work as well, I don't think. Let's give it a shot anyway, 0.4. See, that made it go away. Try 0.1, let's try 0.01. I think that's just because we have such a tiny little piece of geometry coming out of there. And at this stage, we basically have our flash. Now the next step is going to be shaping it so it more closely matches our example that we have. So here's an example of the actual part I modeled this based on, and you can see it's not even, it has jagged edges and it's various heights. So that's what we're gonna work on next. So for step two, we're going to need to right click, go to textures and get a 3D paint. We're basically gonna paint in on this to determine how much this sticks off the surface. And in order for this to work, we need to get another color composite and insert it between the first color composite and our displaced node. We're gonna connect our 3D paint to the background and then inside our displace, believe it or not, what we wanna do is actually disable it because if we don't, it will make it hard to paint onto this texture. It just won't look right. If I preview this color composite, you can see it just, the texture doesn't look right on the displaced geometry. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute the geometry node. That's Alt G if you want a keyboard shortcut for that. So when we get into color composite, I'm gonna hit C to preview. So we see our texture here and inside 3D paint, we'll double click. And what we wanna do is paint away to control the height. So we want to set our brush color to black because we have a white texture that we want to brush over. If we take our opacity down, it won't be quite so strong. So we're gonna have maybe somewhere about 30 to 50% opacity. And for the size, I like to switch into pixel mode. I think it's a little bit easier. I'll try something like 35 pixels. And now if I grab my, if I click this paint button, we should see a circle on screen. That's my paintbrush. When I start painting over the white lines, we should start to see something happen. Although we're not. Let's go to our color composite and make sure we have a blend mode set to multiply. Now, after doing that, you can see my original brush strokes darkened the white texture. Now, if I get out of that preview and I enable my geometry node and I hit refresh, we should see that we get our displacement like we had before. However, it's almost gone where I brushed. So we're gonna control the height of this and the shape of it by brushing it away selectively. If I disable my displace node, refresh my geometry nodes, I can go ahead and preview and color composite once again and back inside 3D paint. Let's say I wanna undo the original paint I did here. I can go to my eraser and I can just erase over that. So I click paint and I can erase what I did there earlier. And we have the same controls for our eraser as we do for our brush. So if I switch to brush mode, I should be able to start brushing right over. I know that I want to erase this line from the inside of this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold Alt and click and drag to change my camera view, which you need to do when you're in paint mode. And I'm gonna paint out this middle part. So I'll just set my opacity pretty much up to 100% and just start painting away to get rid of that line on the inside of my part. So that's pretty easy. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. It'll just make your, your results look more convincing. Now for the sides, I'm gonna bring my opacity down a little bit and I'm just gonna get rid of this line on the sides of the part. Because if you haven't realized already, this is uh, uh, something called a BMX bicycle bar end. It's a little plug that goes into the exposed end of your handlebars to make it a little bit safer to ride. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush this out. By basically reducing my opacity, uh, I can reduce the effect that this paintbrush has on my displacement. So I'll go ahead and try the other side here real quick. And in my experience, I don't want this to be, uh, any of this to be pure white because it just sticks out too far. So I'll go ahead and make sure this ring is knocked back so it's not quite so bright. Maybe I'll take one side down a little bit shorter than the other side. Something like that should be good. And I'll go ahead and get out of my preview, enable my displacement and refresh my geometry node. And there we go. So the side's actually looking pretty good if you ask me. 
Um, the top is not looking so great. I could work on that for sure. And up top left, it looks like it's, it's a little bit long. I'll get back into color composite, disable my displace, and just work on this a little bit longer, and then we'll call it good. So I'll just knock this guy back. I don't want it to be too distracting. And the other benefit of this is that it really just kind of helps to explain to a viewer how this part's made. And like, if it's a premium part, you know, a premium object in the finishing process, someone would go and remove any unwanted or unnecessary uh, flash. It's not good, it's a, it's a manufacturing defect. But if this part is not gonna be even seen by the human eye because it's, it's being inserted into another part or something like that, it's not in plain view, then it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think, again, if we're going for accuracy with our renderings, this is just a nice little option to have. But anyway, that's how I create flash in Keyshot. Hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned a lot. Until next time, happy rendering.